Hi, this is Thomas for CakeProfits.com, and on this video, I'll show you how I set up my Thinkorswim charts to scan, to quickly scan for potential uh, trades. Um, usually, I like my screen clean, sort of, with not a lot of uh, indicators. But when I'm scanning potential stocks to trade, I like to have a number of indicators to confirm what I'm seeing and to help me go through different list of stocks in a faster uh, way so the first thing that I do is I use uh, CCI come here to studies uh, study and add CCI on the bottom the second indicator that I like to use is stochastic I use the slow stochastic Uh, usually think of swim gives you the volume here I take it out I take off that option so usually if I want to see the volume I actually have to add it as a study so volume average I like that average line the next thing that I like to add is three moving averages I add a 21 exponential moving average I like to the 21 periods is a Fibonacci number and it acts very well as support and resistance to make me see clearly if the price of the underlying security is above the 21 day moving average or below the 21 day moving average and the other two that I add is the 50 and the 200 for crossovers usually people use uh, 5100 I like the 200 so to add the moving averages, I'm going to add them in a different fashion. Two symbols, add, add. And the exponential. So like I said before, the exponential, I make it a 21 period. And I like to differentiate the lines to help me see which one is which clearly. So this one I make is the 21, the smaller lines, since it's a smaller moving average. Uh, the next one is the simple 50 moving average. Give it bigger lines. And let's make it a little a yellow, a darker yellow. It's good and the last one will be the 200 simple moving average and this one let's make it a steam solid make it even darker let's make it orange almost and let's make it a little thicker to apply and here you see the moving averages. The next thing that I add is a Bollinger Band setup. And I usually, with the Bollinger Band, I use uh, two standard deviations on top and the bottom and what I like to do with it is I take out the plot line in the middle and uh, to make it uh, blend on the background and make it real light um, and you see the look of that so here it is it's not as light as I wanted it to be because you have to actually change the lines and let's go back and do that The lower band, I want it. Well, I change the plot line. I want uh, the lower and the upper band. That line, and then this is the upper band. Light, light gray. Click OK. Now you'll see the difference. You see how clearly you see it here? I want it to blend in the back a little bit. And as you can see, it's blended. And I took out the 
the plot line in the middle because um, usually the 21 day moving average uh, is very similar to the center line as you can see here so I don't really need the center line it's just gonna uh, crowd up the space the next thing that I like to see on my chart is the implied volatility for the underlying security so Here it is, apply volatility, act selected. But what happens is that I click apply. Usually it will get added on the bottom. I actually like it overlaid on the on the chart. So to do that, as you can see here it's in the lower uh, section of the chart. Grab it, just grab it and drop it on the top. Apply. And as you can see now it's overlaid on the chart but what happens is the uh, crash clashes with a lot of the the other stuff the candles and the other lines on the on the chart so I usually make it real light in the background too um, so right now it's green I make it uh I'll make it a gray, but I make it a, a darker gray. Oh actually make it this blue here that's really light. Let's see what that looks like. Apply. That's actually too light. Let me make it uh just a darker let's make it purple. A light purple. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's better. And as you can see, you see it overlaid in the back here. And it's less intrusive. And you can see the candles a little clearer and the other lines, the moving averages. The last indicator that I'd like to add is the time price opportunity indicator. And um, It's a time price opportunity profile. I select it. That goes to the top. Apply. And here it is. I usually make it a little lighter. For this video, I'm just going to leave it the way it is right now. So, for me, this setting looks a little overcrowded, but I'll show you in a second what I do with it. So, what I usually do is I quickly scan a watch list against this setting here. And what I'm searching for is I'm looking at the moving averages, see which direction they're pointing. If there's a change in direction, like you see here, uh, if the price is above, what is it above? Is it above the 21? Is it above the 50? Is it above the the 200? Is there anything crossing like it did here? Then I look at the TPO profile, and this gives you a range of where the stock has mostly been. It gives you a price, a point of control, which in this uh, instance is around 4160. And this gives you a quick idea of where the stock is going or where it has been. And the other indicators that I use is the CCI. If I'm selling short, I look for that direction. If I'm looking to, to buy, I see if this, the CCI is coming from the top, getting ready to cross the center line, the zero line. And same thing with the stochastic. Like for example, this point here. You see that it went over zero line, the stochastic cross. There's not a lot of volume. There was volume before that, but not at this point here. And you see that at this point in time, it was correct. The indicators were correct. The stock was below the average range which is shaded here in purple and everything was correct it was pointing to the stock going up uh, it crossed over bounce of the 50 moving average it crossed over um, the 21 day moving average and it went up also if you see the Bollinger Bands it hit the bottom of the Bollinger Band it came over a little squeeze, it's a tiny squeeze here and it just bounced off the bottom and it just shot up so everything worked up 
So that's basically what I'm looking for. What I usually do is load up a, a list. This is my watch list. And I quickly go through it. And, and uh, at, at the end of every day or every other day. And I see what's, uh, what's good. This is a good example here. This stock is around the, the average price. Uh, it already crossed over. It's getting ready to cross over here. So that's something that I will look into. Next stock. This one is above the average price. The the CCI, the stochastic is uh, they both pointing down, but the uh, moving averages are pointing up. So this just helps you go through stuff real quick. And if you know what you're looking for. You take a quick look. And this usually are stocks that I know already and I have marked some of them as you can see and usually I'm just waiting for certain setups. And what you could do also is once you have set up this 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 uh study set you can just save it for future use save study set and I actually have one saved just for this purpose and then whenever you have a as you add stocks to your list uh, whenever you have a list ready just pull it up you come over here load up your set and just go real quick through the different uh, stocks it saves you a lot of time